Hello and welcome to session two of You Are Good Enough. Last week, I know it probably was a bit of a stretch to do 60 minutes a day of listening prayer. I hope the first couple of sessions really opens up your mind and your heart to spend time receiving what God wants you to receive from this study, especially understanding who you are in Christ. Today we're going to start with scripture. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you've been called out of darkness and that you're living in the light, the light of being his special child? You are. You know, the word identity is the collective aspect of the set characteristics by which a thing is definitively recognizable or known. What is your identity? How do you identify yourself? Do you first identify yourself as a child of God or as what you do for a living or who you are naturally? I'm a daughter, a son of... A lot of times we don't identify ourselves first and foremost as God's children and therefore we get stuck in a rut of our own identity. I know for me, my identity has been a challenge for most of my life. As a child, again, I was all wrapped up in performance. It's kind of strange because my, my parents loved me. I knew they did. I didn't have this abusive childhood like some people do, but still it wasn't enough. I was always trying to measure up. I started out as a kid. I had a gifting as an artist and a musician and that wasn't good enough. I wanted to be an athlete and I was small and I was skinny and I had no business on any sports field or court, but I was determined. So because I was small, I couldn't play football, but I wanted to anyway. And by the time I was 13, 14, I was only like five foot nothing, maybe a hundred pounds, but I was so determined to play football that I think the coaches felt sorry for me and they actually propped me up as an example like, hey, this kid tries so hard, I wish the whole team would try as hard as he does. Well, that led me to an identity, an identity as an overcomer. So I grew up, I grew a little bit and, and played high school football and basketball and track, but I wanted more. So I was determined to play college football. So I went to the University of Buffalo and I walked on as, again, too skinny, too small, too slow, but I was determined. And over four years, I packed on 40 pounds of muscle and did everything I had to do to overcome the hurdle of just not being good enough and started and played. And that just, again, just continued to build my identity as an overcomer. So I got out of college and I went to work for corporations for a couple of years and wasn't good enough. So I decided that I was gonna start my own company at 25. And again, everybody thought I was crazy. I had a new baby, a new house, a wife who worked probably 60 hours a week. And now I'm gonna start my company. Nobody wanted to help me. So I begged, borrowed and stole and I just got the money I needed and I started my company again. Tell me I can't do it, I'm gonna do it. So my identity is continually being built around overcoming obstacles. Well, life just kept going in that direction and I just started to break down. There's no way that you can stay focused and moving forward in that identity without having some breakage. And over time, I could feel myself just slipping. And life just keep go kept going on and, you know, my identity was continually focused on what I couldn't do, what I had to overcome. And then life took a serious turn when my business fell apart. I thought it was the worst thing that could happen to someone. After 25 years of business, things just went south. And it was a lot of time, a lot of it was my mistake. A lot of it was my decisions because I was so compelled to try to 
show people who I was and how good I was and how to plow forward. It's no identity to have, I can tell you that. And then, as most of you know, my wife passed away a year later, which was devastating. My identity as a businessman was gone. My identity as Molly's husband was gone. Sadly, I let her take the reins and be the spiritual leader in our house. So therefore, I was left completely vulnerable and I really felt like a fraud. At 50 years old, I woke up and said, who the heck am I? And that's when God came in. I don't wanna see you wait until you're 50 years old to come to that recognition of who am I? God has a special plan for you. And today, we're gonna to talk about that plan. We're gonna talk about who you are. What is your personal identity? The best thing you can do is unpack who you are now versus who you want to be. Stephen Covey says, one of the biggest hurdles that we need to overcome is to unlearn, not necessarily learn. So we have to today talk about what we have to unlearn in, in identity. Who and what are we wrapped up in? Again, it's probably not God as much as it should be. Well, I can say that pretty much across the line. You know, we are not as surrendered to Christ as we should be. In your group today, you're going to talk about your personal identity. What do you identify with? Is it Christ or is it something or somebody else? It's time to stop and pull back that identity that you may have in other things and redirect it towards Christ. It's time to unpack. Reread 1 Peter 2.9. Are you a chosen priest? Do you feel that way? Are you walking out of the darkness? Are you walking towards his light? Those are the things that you have to get real with. Unpack, be vulnerable, and talk to your group about. Next week, we're going to get even more real as we talk about what you're walking away from. In order to move forward in his light, we have to walk away from something. The Israelites had to walk out of Egypt. They had to walk towards the promised land. God has a promised land for you, but he also has Egypt in your rearview mirror. So what are you going to walk away from in order to really walk into your identity in Christ? I pray that this will be revelatory for you and that you're going to have a great fire starter method week of journaling and that next week you're going to really focus on what you need to walk away from. Have a great week.